Welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Derek Asante. And today, I want to discuss with you, um, I guess, sports. And uh, the impact it has on the young people, the children, the youth, the kids. Before I jump into this one, um, just a word to all the parents out there. It's not about you. It's not about you and make it about the kids. Because it's about them. Do not live vicariously through them. Or, or in search of your failed dreams. The minute you do that, you're going to do two things. One of two things. You're going to lose your kids, right? And you're also going to hurt them. One of those two things is going to happen before any hopes or success that you had hoped for them might come to flourishing. So just a bit of an advice. It's not about you. Now, today I wanted to discuss and then, you know, dive in a little deeper into the ways in which sports shape the lives of young people. Okay, and it's important. So I'm your host again, and, you know, the various benefits that I want to talk about that young people will get from participating in sports. And it's really, it's the power of sports that allow this to happen, right? I'll be pulling from studies that were conducted by Canadian institutions to kind of share with you some of the benefits. From physical health to mental well-being, I'll be discussing some of the various ways that sports can have a positive impact on young people's lives. Now, before we go any further, please make sure you like, subscribe, follow, and share this episode and other episodes that you've enjoyed so you can continue to support the show. Every single like, comment, and share is greatly appreciated. It allows me to continue to do what I'm doing. So I want to start with the physical benefits because those are the obvious ones, right? Um, especially when you're talking about sports, right? Sports do help young people maintain a healthy weight. They develop strong bones and muscles and obviously improve on their um, cardiovascular fitness. Right, So that's essential. That's the basics. That's the easy stuff that we all know. If anybody has ever been to a gym or played a sport or walked <laughs> right, um, or ran or, or did sit-ups or lifted an arm or anything that gets blood moving is going to be great. Yes, it's exercise. But... I'm speaking about sports, team sports, not the individual sports, the team sports, right? Yes, you can get physical health and, and benefits from individual sports. That's not what I'm saying. But this discussion I want to share with you is more going to be focused on the team aspect of it as well, okay? Um, it's a great way to reduce the risk of chronic diseases like you know, diabetes and, and heart diseases. So, parents, if you're listening, it's not about the glitz and glamour and the success and the fortune and fame that your child may bring you. But the fact that they'll be alive long enough, right, to be able to enjoy some of those riches if they do get there. That's what's important. You also don't want your child to be that one athlete who gets on the court or the field and has a health issue that no one knew about because we pushed them so hard. Right? So just keep that in the back of your mind while you're pushing your kids through walls and stuff. 
Um, a study was conducted by the Canadian Society of Exercise and Physiology found that Canadian youth who participate in regular physical activity, such as sports, have a much lower risk of developing obesity and type 2 diabetes. That's important information. A lot of us parents don't think that our children can have such conditions diabetes, obesity, you know, he's a kid, he's going to grow out of it, he's going to stretch out of it, it's going to happen this way and that way, and we are not even doctors. Okay? So, you got to be honest with yourself. If your child is obese for their age, you can tell just by looking at them. Get them the help they need before it gets worse. Don't chalk it up to the fact that they're too young to get help. Then you're going to have, you know, adults who aren't able to cope because parents weren't able to help them when they were younger. Don't enable the problem. Help resolve it. Change their diet. Encourage them to do more active activities, right? To be more active out there. So... Type 2 is hitting everybody. You don't have to be old to get it anymore. Kids are getting it. So just understand that. Because our food is definitely out the window. It's, it's gone to garbage. So if our food is trash, you can only imagine what we're putting into our children and ourselves. Another study by the Public Health Agency of Canada found that children and youth who participate in organized sports actually have a much better overall health and fitness compared to those who don't participate. So if that's not a, a jab at you, you know, do something about it. These benefits are not limited to children only um, or teens and young adults who are physically active, but also have lower risk of developing chronic diseases in adulthood. So... The benefits of doing it now carries over into when you're older, right? So keep that in mind. Um, some of the benefits, right, of organized sports for children include participating in sports, right? Obviously, maintain a healthy weight. It allows them to develop um, stronger bones, muscles, and, and the cardiovascular, like I mentioned. The other point is... Regular physical activity, such as sports, can reduce the risk of chronic diseases. Obesity is one. Type 2 is one. Heart disease is, is definitely one. It also helps them to reduce stress. Okay, this is something that nobody talks about because we assume kids don't have stress. It's only adults, those of us with bills and responsibilities. No, peer pressure and pressures from parents and institutional pressures right, through schools to, to do well and all these things, that's stress, okay? So sports help reduce that. It also improves their self-esteem, increases their confidence as well. You know, sports also improves your overall mental health of active kids. So you really got to pay attention to that. Read the energy of your child when they're into sports and when they're not doing anything. There's a huge difference, Right? teaches them the important life skills, you know, the soft skills, right? Including like uh, time management, showing up on time, right? Being prepared, practicing all the time with your, your teammates, goal setting. We're trying to get better, right? We're developing a skill. We're trying to get better at it. And how do we get better as a team? How do we communicate better as a team, right? Which leads us into cooperation, leadership, decision-making, you have to decide what to do and when you need to do it by. And what are the consequences if we don't do it by this time or we don't follow that play, right? So it teaches them a lot. But parents can also learn from these lessons. We can learn from them. Decision making, leadership, cooperation, goal setting, time management, all these things they are going to benefit from because they're playing sports. We can benefit just as much. Right? So 
I just wanted to name a few of those just to kind of set you guys in the right direction here. Now, there are some social benefits, obviously, to organized sports. And, I mean, I can attest to, to a lot of that, right? If you met me when I was in, you know, grade five, grade six, I was quiet. You wouldn't even know I was in the room. But the minute I started to play basketball, grade nine, things changed. I became more vocal, right? I became more more engaging with other people. Speaking to my teammates gave me the confidence to be able to speak to people outside the game of basketball. And yes, I found my voice. I found my independence. I was able to stand on my own. You know, peer pressure overcame all of that. You know what I mean? So... There are clear benefits, right, for your child. So you just have to be aware of what they are. And I want to share some of those with you. It helps them develop teamwork, right? Working with their teammates towards a common goal. That's a huge accomplishment, right? Um, when you play team sports, it requires your child to communicate effectively, though, right, with their teammates, with the officials, Right, You may not get a call that you like. But how do you communicate with them effectively so that they can understand what, what's bothering you or what your concerns were? Now, communication isn't just about you speaking. It's about you being able to listen as well. So if your child doesn't know how to interact with officials, because that's usually the biggest obstacle, right? The officiating or even coaching. How do you communicate with your coach? Right? What's your tone that you're taking? What's the body language? How are you expressing yourself? Are you able to use your words? Or do you just lash out? Right? These are things that you need to be able to identify with your child and help them work on that so that it translates on the floor with their teammates and coaches. Right? It helps them you know, improve their communication skills. You're not there to just be a helicopter parent. You're not there to be a parent coach. You're there to be a parent, a mentor, a guide. So help them get through it. Don't just sit there and cuss out everybody else who's, you know, not necessarily on the side of your child because maybe the calls aren't going their way. On and off the court is your duty to make them a better person. But sports will definitely set them on the right path with your assistance. It also provides them with a sense of belonging, right? Because now I'm a part of a team, a community outside of my home, right? <clears throat> Friendships, it helps them with that. And obviously support networks outside of you. So don't be afraid to push them, but in the right way. Make sure it's healthy, right? Because if you don't, then they're going to fall into the the dark side of things, where the mental aspect of it, right? Now, when someone is suffering from mental health, it's often very difficult to say, I'm going to help them, right? Rather, you should ask how you can support them. Not help them, but support them, because helping someone often gets interpreted as they can't do for themselves. But in this case, they can you just have to be able to communicate, you know, with them to ask and find out how you can be of a, a support system, how you can assist them with, with what they need, right? And sports does this for us, especially those of us who play team sports. The benefits of sport doesn't just end with this physical aspects of it and the friendships and, and so forth, right? It also has a positive impact on your mental health, can not only help you reduce the stress, improve your self-esteem and your confidence, but it has proven to also contribute to improving your academic performance. That's huge. That's huge. But let's keep going. Think about that. A study also conducted by University of Alberta found that Canadian youth who actually participate in sports have a lower level of anxiety and depression compared to those who don't. Right? At least your kid has an outlet of sorts. 
That's what's important. Um, I want to share with you another study by Simon Fraser University found that Canadian youth who also participate in sports are more likely to have better academic performance. But there are several factors. Right? So now you have two institutions telling you the same thing. Right? Which is important. Now, the other factors that I think play a role with academics and, and one that, you know, needs to be mentioned is that the young person or the, the student athlete needs to have an interest in that subject matter. If they don't have an interest, it doesn't matter how well they're involved with their team, their academic performance may not necessarily improve. That's just overall in general, right? Like, we, we perform better when there's an interest in what it is that we are taking part in. I actually like doing this, then guess what? I'm going to excel in it. If I don't like it, it's not going to happen. It doesn't matter how well I'm, I'm you know, faking it or getting through it. If I don't enjoy it, I'm not going to be at my best. Okay? So that's something to keep in mind. Now, some people do get away with it because they have great memory. And that that's the downside to um, our educational system is that it's really a game of memorizing. Who can memorize the most gets the highest grades, it seems like to me. This is my biased opinion, obviously. Okay? Because a lot of things that we we regurgitate in class and, and schools, we don't really use in life. So, anyway. That's another day, another episode. Okay? But participating in sports also helps to develop soft skills. Right? I mentioned a few of them. Decision making, time management, obviously setting goals, but also teaches young people how to handle failure and adversity. And these are skills that are essential to success, you know, to succeed in life, in any aspect, in any area of life. If you can, you know, handle failure well and get through or persevere through adversity, you're well ahead of many of us. Okay? Now, the type of parents that the child has <clears throat> also has a huge impact on, on, on this part, unfortunately. Parents need to understand that losing is healthy for a child development. As much as you don't want to see your child take an L, they need plenty of those in order to develop and learn from them. A child who wins all the time and doesn't know how to lose is always going to be devastated when they finally get the first L. And now you have to pick up the pieces. And if you're not equipped and you don't have the communication skills as a parent or a coach, guess what? You might actually cause more harm to that young person by showing them the tough love that you think might work. So just be careful how you approach some of these things. But losing is important and the earlier you can get a child um, to understand the impact and how healthy losing can be for them and, and them developing themselves as you know a much more sustainable individual, the better off they're going to be. Okay? Because life will teach them the hard lessons. So you might as well get ahead of the game and help them understand at an early age how to conduct themselves in various situations. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, they need to learn the hard lessons with a soft touch. <laughs> right? So keep that in mind. Now, outside the mental health, we also have social benefits. This is another important aspect of sports, right? The social benefits that it provides. Sports help young people develop important, you know, skills for, for a lifetime. Another study conducted by the University of Ottawa found that Canadian youth who participate in organized sports are more likely to have a larger and more diverse group of friends compared to those who don't play sports. And if you pay closer attention right, to sports, you'll see clearly that it's the only place on the planet that is safe for people of all walks in life to congregate 
and and everybody's enjoying themselves. Just look at sport sporting events, right? That is just a montage that you want to be around. So the benefits are extremely rich, right? Not only that, sports helps, you know, build character and teaches them about the importance of sportsmanship, integrity, and respect, right? Respect not only for the opposition, but for themselves, because that's where character is developed. I got to respect me, right? And these values are, are not only important in sports, but guess what? It transforms and translates into life. Okay? So if you're enjoying this episode right now, do me a favor and, and make sure you hit the follow, hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the bell notification if you're watching this on YouTube. You know, every single support, click, like, comment, is greatly appreciated. Help me reach, you know, 100 subscribers. Um, and, and let's keep it moving. The channel is very new. And on uh, Podbean, if you're listening there, or whatever platform you're listening on, please continue to share it and follow and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Okay? Now, back to <clears throat> the discussion here. You have to consider fact that if we're going to help young people develop this character and values they have to endure some challenges they have to be able to overcome some obstacles and we all know sports comes with its own set of challenges okay now young people are going to face obstacles like injuries you know um Losing streaks and even discrimination, and and this is more prominent in in the game of football, also known as soccer, right? Especially if you look at the European landscape and, and so forth, there's a lot of discrimination against um, you know the African players who play for different clubs and so forth. Okay, this is no secret. I mean. Can pull it up. FIFA is not, you know, the cleanest organization, and, and many of these clubs, right? But we are human, so these are obstacles that young people are going to face, right? They're going to go into different, you know, levels and leagues that aren't going to be in their favor. They're not going to like them, or or maybe their personality, or just the way they look, right? They're going to be treated differently. The different coaches that they're going to encounter at different levels. They're human. They're going to have their own biases. They're going to have their own preferences of players that they favor. Right? Over your child. So be prepared. Be prepared to have the skills to be able to assist and support your child when they hit those obstacles. Because they're going to need you. And if you're not well equipped Guess what? Neither are they, because you're you're not going to be of any help to them. So, it's important to remember that these challenges can also be opportunities for growth and learning, not only for them as players, but for you as parents. Right? By learning how to overcome obstacles and persevere through difficult times, your child. Right can develop resilience and grit, skills that will serve them well in all areas of their lives as they, you know, move forward. And I want to give you another example here. A study by University of British Columbia found that Canadian youth who have experienced injuries have a higher level of mental toughness and are more resilient. Hmm. I wonder why that is. They've gone through it. They bounce back. They know they're capable now. They know what it takes. They remember the pain. They remember the low and they remember the highs. So now they become more humble. They appreciate things. 
right? They don't take opportunities for granted anymore because they've been there. And that's the character. That's the value in, in facing obstacles and taking L's, right? So challenges are going to come, just like in life. The best way to get through them is to be prepared as much as you possibly can by having all the tools on your belt. So when the job presents itself, you are well equipped. So let's not push our kids into sports for all the wrong reasons. Instead, let's guide them through it. The power and influence of team sports, right? To become better versions of themselves. So before I wrap this up, I want to let you know that you should let them be. Let them breathe. Just let them live. And most importantly, allow them to show you or simply remind you as an adult what fun looks like. Okay? So, listen, until next episode, I would like it if you really just click the subscribe button, follow, hit the thumbs up, share it, all of that good stuff. It doesn't cost you a thing and I appreciate it very much. Help me grow this channel to 100 um, subscribers on YouTube and, um, <clears throat> you know, make it another 200 for followers on Podbean. All right. Appreciate it. Download the episode until the next one. Until the next one. Love, peace and happiness.